In Nigeria, for example, the Evidence Act says something that it also it aligned itself with one of the provisions of the UN Convention Against Torture, Creating Human and Degrading Treatment. That Evidence Act is saying that every person who had complained or he had proved that the evidence that is had against them, either confessional statement or whatever, was gotten through duress, through torture, through acts of duress, that that evidence will not be admitted in court. So what devil usually happens that in that court, once the, 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 this, this allegation has been made, all the matters end and they begin to start off what is called trial within trial. So it goes on a longer, another process which is trying to prove was torture actually carried out. And I think that this is also another thing because the more we can be able to strengthen this process and that early contact can be made, it becomes very helpful to also be able to make sure that these victims um, are not are actually being supported. And I believe that as time goes on, when we, the, 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 the perpetrators um, begin to understand that once they are torturing people, that any evidence that they are getting, any confessional, so-called confessional statements in court, they are getting will not be accepted more by court, and this will make their cases to fall. Can I add one thing okay. uh, mm -hmm. before we move on? Uh, uh, from my personal experience and from, uh, for instance, GCRT's uh, work with the IFAC and the assistance we have received, uh, these reports are also a very powerful tool for advocacy and also for education, to inform the judges, to educate the judges about the nature of trauma, for instance. Currently, uh, after several cases, we have been approached by the um, the body in Georgia that investigates crimes committed by the uh, law enforcement, um, basically uh, inhuman treatment and torture committed by the law enforcement, uh, to... Uh, provide them training on the uh, nature of trauma and why prosecutors have uh, approached us to provide them with training too. Basically, we have been developing a process of trauma-informed access to justice to uh, structure the process on, of investigation when the um, rights of detainees have been violated, the, also in other cases, so that the process, the uh, questioning on the one hand and also the procedural issues are victim-centered and um, uh, take into consideration the nature of traumatic experiences, the um, neurobiological reactions, etc. So um, it's a very uh, powerful, and it all started with uh, individual uh, reports or individual cases. So it's a very powerful tool for advocacy and, uh, and yeah, bringing in this education into the justice system.